The Checkpoints is presented by pharmaceutical company GM Pharma. Kauri, chairman of Georgian National Communications Commission, said on Thursday in the parliament while presenting a report for 2022 that the number of fixed internet subscribers stood at over 1 million in 2022, marking 7% growth year on year. He also emphasized that compared to 2021, the number of users increased by 71,000, which means a 7% increase. The Ministry of Finance published the five-month report on the performance of the 2023 budget. According to the document, the budget collected taxes of around 7 billion lari, which was 90% of the plan. According to the Ministry of Finance, the budget received 30 million lari from the privatization, which was 35% of six months. Exports from Georgia to Spain hit a record high. The increase amounted to 654% in five months of 2023. According to official statistics, the largest share of exports, 75.9%, accounted for copper ores and concentrates, followed by non-denatured ethyl spirits, nuts and whole nuts. The Department of Roads said that as a result of heavy rain, the landslide on Rukoti caused traffic restrictions. On the 169 kilometers of Rukoti section of the International Tbilisi Senaki Leselidze Highway, landslides occurred in several places as a result of heavy rain and traffic was disrupted. At this time, active cleaning works are being carried out in order to fully restore the road traffic in the shortest possible time, says the information released by the Roads Department. This is The Checkpoints. I'm Elena Kvangilashvili, author and the host of the show, and The Checkpoints team is ready to sum up business and economics week for you. Oliver Varhely, uh, European Commissioner for European Neighborhood Policy and Enlargement, declared that Georgia has fulfilled only three of the 12 priorities and has achieved certain progress in seven directions out of 12 priorities set by the European Commission. He stated this while presenting an oral report on the progress made by Georgia Ukraine and Moldova in terms of reforms in Stockholm. This leads me to Georgia, where 12 priorities were identified in our June opinion, and we see that three of these have been completed. First, on gender, gender equality and fight uh, violence against women. Uh, second, taking into account European Court of Human Rights judgments in court deliberations. And third, on appointing a public defender through a transparent process. In seven other areas, Georgia has achieved some progress uh, to address, uh, these are the areas to address the issue of political polarization, to guarantee the full functioning of the state institutions and to further improve the electoral framework, to adopt the implement a transparent and effective judicial reform strategy, to strengthen the independence of the anti-corruption agency, to strengthen the fight against organized crime, to strengthen the protection of human rights of vulnerable groups, and to ensure the involvement of civil society in decision-making processes. So briefly, uh, on the individual steps, what we see on step one, that is the uh, political polarization, <coughs> most members of the parliament have ended their boycott of the parliament, and few laws were passed with cross-party support uh, to fully address this priority. Georgia needs to ensure an efficient oversight uh, of the parliament and end the use of harsh rhetoric and honor past political agreements, notably the one uh, brokered by the European Union, which is called the EU-mediated 19th of April uh, agreement. On step two, to get into the full functioning of state institutions and to further improve the electoral framework, the government has adopted public administration reform strategy and an action plan. The electoral code and the law on political associations were amended to align with them uh, to the Venice Commission recommendations and, OHI and uh, ODI recommendations, but we still need Georgia to improve the parliamentary oversight, 
to adequately investigate allegations of electoral malpractices as highlighted in the OD reports and to reverse the electoral amendments changing the appointment procedure of the CSC chairman. This is the Central Election Commission. Uh, on step three, the inclusive and effective judicial reform, including the High Council of Justice, Georgia needs to submit amendments on judicial reform to the Venice Commission for a second opinion, to adopt a broader reform of the judiciary, especially of the High Council of Justice, and finally, to appoint the remaining non-judge members of the High Council of Justice. Uh, on step four, anti-corruption, a new anti-corruption bureau was set up to fully address this step. Georgia still needs to ensure that the anti-corruption bureau operates independently and that the Venice Commission is consulted uh, on, the draft, on the draft legislation and we would uh, ask Georgia to reconsider its decision to withdraw from the OECD anti-corruption network. On step six, organized crime, Georgia stepped up its cooperation with Europol and the member states. Now Georgia needs to address all the outstanding recommendations of the Council of Europe Money War. On step eight, protection of human rights and vulnerable groups, Georgia needs to ensure that an action plan for human rights strategy is prepared in an inclusive manner and to ensure freedom of assembly and protection for members of the LGBT, uh, LGBTQI community. On step 10, involving the civil society and decision-making processes at all levels, Georgia needs to resume constructive dialogue with the civil society and implement regular and transparent consultations. In the area of de-oligarchization, Georgia has, received, has achieved uh, limited progress. In this area, the Venice Commission, in its recent recommendation from the 12th of June, reiterated that the draft law should not be adopted in this current form. In this regard, I welcome the announcement made yesterday and the day before uh, by the ruling party that this draft law will not be adopted. Now Georgia has to focus on and adopt a law setting out a systemic approach in line with the Venice Commission recommendations, including by reinforcing rules on competition policy and financing of political parties. Finally, on media pluralism and standards for criminal procedures against media owners, Georgia has reached no progress. In order to fulfill this, uh, this step, Georgia needs to amend the law on broadcasting in line with the legal opinion of the Council of Europe and to ensure the safety of journalists and to raise the level of protection of freedom of journalists and media owners. The oral report from the European Commission was followed by a special briefing of the president of Georgia, Salome Zurabishvili. She pardoned Tavari TV founder Nika Gvaramia. I came to this decision after all the legal steps had been exhausted and the court rejected the cassation appeal on June 19th. I'm not going to explain why I made this decision as it is my discretionary right. I just want to remind you what I also said in the European Parliament that such a decision, the president discretionary right is not subject to anyone's pressure, advice, recommendation or any other type of threat. This is the president's decision, she underscored. The Tbilisi City Court sentenced Guaramia to three years and six months in prison for abuse of power over his managerial decisions when he ran Rustavi to TV. The overall expectation was that the president would comment on the decision that former Minister of Economy Natia Turnava will be serving as the acting NBG president. Former Economy Minister Natia Turnava on Thursday was elected vice governor of the National Bank of Georgia NBG and will therefore temporarily serve as the acting NBG president. The modified law on the National Bank providing the post-related revisions came into force after the parliament overcame the president's veto. The NBG will have four vice governors throughout the transition period until the tenure of one of the vice governors on the board ends. Currently, the NBG board consists of seven members. Georgian President Salome Zurabishvili presented two more candidates to the parliament, but the majority say they will not back them. However, even seven board members can elect the president, who is then approved by the president. Archil Mestvirishvili took over as NBG governor when Kobak Benadadze's seven-year term expired on March 2 of this year. What the rest of the week looked like for Georgia's economy, here is our weekly news and outlook.
On June 21, the Monetary Policy Committee of the National Bank of Georgia decided to keep the monetary policy rate unchanged. The monetary policy rate stands at 10.5 percent. In Georgia, inflation is on a downward trend, and in May, annual headline inflation decreased to 1.5 percent, while the core retreated to 3.9 percent. Inflation decline is mostly driven by the gradual elimination of exogenous shock leading to reduction in the prices of imported goods. Tightened monetary policy also helps inflation to trend downward. The National Bank of Georgia continuously monitors the developments in the economy and financial markets and will use all available tools to ensure price stability. The next meeting of Monetary Policy Committee will be held on August 2 of this year. Tax benefits are planned for individuals engaged in agritourist and wine tourist activities. Proposed amendments to the tax code will be presented during the Bureau meeting. The project specifies that these tax benefits will apply solely to individuals whose annual income does not exceed 500,000 lari. According to the proposal, the income generated and the wages paid by the individuals involved in agritourism and wine tourism will be exempt from income tax for 10 calendar years if granted this status. The implementation date for this draft law has been set for July 1, 2025. The state will now fully finance liver transplant surgery, announced the Georgian Minister of Health, Rabazarashvili, following the government session. The minister emphasized the significance of this decision, noting that previously the costs were covered partly. In previous cases, the state only financed 70,000 lari out of the total 120,000 lari required for liver transplant surgery. It was challenging for individuals to gather the remaining 50,000 lari. Therefore, the state has decided to finance the diagnosis and transplant surgery cost in full. From today, the state will cover the entire 120,000 lari for liver transport procedures, he stated. Tbilisi Transport Company LLC and Tegeta Motors reached an agreement under which 160 18-meter mine buses would be acquired. At the municipal government meeting, Tbilisi Mayor Kahakaladze noted some buses would arrive before April 1, 2024. A tender for the 18-meter buses acquisition was announced and Tegeta Motors won on June 15. A deal for the acquisition of 160 units of 80-meter main buses was signed with them. Buses will be phased in gradually. The first 50 buses will come around April 1, 2024 and, and the remaining number will Will arrive by the end of 2024, stated Kahakaladze. The mayor also explained that the new buses are intended for 162 passengers with 43 seats. Furthermore, Kahakaladze stated that municipality is undertaking a large scale reform and that with new 18 meter buses, even, even more people could access the public transport system. Irakli Garibashvili, Prime Minister of Georgia, met the visiting members of Board of Directors from the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development on Thursday. Dignitaries discussed the successful cooperation between Government of Georgia and EBRD, along with the significant projects that are implemented in the public and private sectors of the company, with support of the bank. It was noted that EBRD has to this day invested almost 5 billion euros in 283 projects. According to the Prime Minister of Georgia, support of EBRD in financing the priority areas of the country is priceless. Hopes we express that productive cooperation will be continued in future as well. Discussion touched upon the structural reforms currently carried out in the country and progress achieved in the journey of democratic development and advancement. 
the National Environment Agency issued a statement regarding the expected dangers in the Black Sea waters of Georgia due to the explosion of Kahoka hydroelectric power plant in Kherson region. As explained by the National Environment Agency, the quality of seawater is within the norm on the entire perimeter. In addition, they add that, according to experts' assessment, it's important for the prevention to increase the frequency of monitoring the quality of seawater in order to detect and evaluate possible expected changes in a timely manner. In accordance with the EU Marine Strategy Framework Directive, the National Environment Agency is improving its monitoring system. At this stage, laboratory equipment of modern standards has already been purchased, with the help of which specific pollutants can be detected with high accuracy. According to the laboratory studies conducted by the National Environment Agency, the quality of seawater is within the norm on the entire perimeter, reads the statement. Tbilisi Mayor Kakakaladze requested the business sector not to exceed the sad noise limit and instructed the municipal inspection to lead activities to solve the problem. At the municipal government sitting, Kakakaladze said that noise posed in public and private spaces discomfited people and tourists. Physical and legal persons will face sanctions and fines if they violate norms, he said. Of course, we support business in every way. This attitude will continue in the future. We must not forget the population. We must take care of them too. My request would be regulate this and not create a problem for the local population, said Kaha Galadze. In the beginning of this year, Georgian mobile virtual operation Mobinex launched in the UK. Why did Mobinex choose the UK and what are the company's plans to answer these and other questions? Let's watch the interview that BMG's business wing anchor Georgi Aronia conducted with Mobinex's managing partner Rati Akhledyani. Rati, hi. Thank you for your time. It's uh, it's a pleasure always to talk to businesses, and especially to businesses that, to Georgian businesses that operate outside Georgia. In this case, in the UK, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your invitation. Let's begin our interview by discussing uh, Mobinex, obviously, the first uh, Georgian MVNO in the in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, let's begin by explaining what your company does. Uh, thank you again for having me here. We are, the, we are the first Georgian mobile operator in the UK, which means that uh, we, are, uh, we are doing telecom, we are, uh, doing telecom business in the UK for, uh, for, uh, uh, for Georgian uh, community mostly, but uh, we are also targeting different uh, migrant co communities, such as Filipino, for example. We are serving them as a, as a normal, like uh, everyday mobile operator. Uh, offering them uh, like calls, uh, messaging services, as well as mobile data, and it's worth of mentioning that we 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 have a 5G, which is uh, which makes us very unique in terms of uh, being MVNO, uh, because not not all <coughs> not all MVNOs uh, have this uh, uh, possibility to uh, serve customers uh, uh, with the 5G technology, uh, and we are we are advanced in this uh, industry this way. Uh, that's uh, basically what we do for our target audience uh, in the first place, and um, and we also serve them uh, having uh, we, with our holding company. We also serve them, offering them different services such as remittance or or parcel shipment services, postal services, basically. And what we are trying to achieve uh, with Mobinex uh, is to create ecosystem for our uh, for our niche target markets. And offer them all our services in one uh, one bundle in one uh, ecosystem, and uh, they can benefit from using uh, our different uh, uh, services uh, from our different organizations in the UK. As you just mentioned, Mobinex's target audience is uh, Georgians plus uh, migrants from different countries, basically diasporas uh, residing in the United Kingdom. How big of a niche is it so that uh, you built the whole company around it? Well, Georgians' uh, niche market is not that big. Uh, however, we also target uh, uh, like people from post-Soviet Union countries, plus uh, Filipinos and Bangladeshi and all, all other uh, migrant uh, population, basically in the UK, which is uh, and which is quite large. 
However, our niche, I mean, first year, our target gonna be uh, just uh, 50,000 subscribers. That's gonna be, uh, that should be at the end of this uh, this year, uh, not this year, after one year of operation, sorry, which gonna be the uh, beginning of next year, basically. Uh, uh, but uh, but, uh, that, uh, but the Georgian migrants are not only our target niche market, therefore, therefore we are targeting to over more than 50K people at the end of a couple of years' time. UK is one of the hubs, global hubs, for uh, MVNOs. There are around 150 companies uh, operating in this sphere. Considering that and considering your niche audience, uh, how competitive is uh, your technology first and how competitive are the tariffs that you provide to your customers? We uh, we try not to be uh, the most expensive, neither uh, the, 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 the cheapest uh, provider in industry. Even though we are using the best uh, network in the UK, uh, EE network, which is the best uh, in quality in terms of the uh, radio network in terms of uh, speed of the of internet, uh, we still try to um, be uh, the, like uh, not very expensive, neither very low price. Uh, ha having, we try not to have very expensive, neither uh, low price. Uh, what we try to be uh, competitive with is that the service quality we offer in terms of the customer experience, in, to in terms of the ser uh, customer service in their native language, for example, for Georgians, for Filipinos, for for Ukrainians, for example, we try to deliver all these sorts of services and all this ecosystem in their native language, which is quite uh, attractive uh, for them. We also, as I mentioned, we also try to bundle and cross-sell our services, and therefore they can benefit uh, using using being Mobinex subscriber. They can also benefit in our from our different services, uh, which is also attractive, and that's that's basically our advantage uh, over other operators operating in in the UK even though there are 150 operators in the UK all of I mean everyone especially us we also we have our niche target markets and our advantages which is uh, highlighted in in the, in the target audience uh, we are targeting to can Mobinex's users use their products their bundles outside the UK in the EU for example uh, indeed, uh, since we have, uh, since we are licensed in the UK, and since we have uh, uh, agreement with the, the, the mo uh, mobile operator in the UK, that gives us possibility to serve customers the same way in the in EU, e e European Union, the same way we do that in the, in the UK itself. So our customers can travel all around Europe uh, with the same SIM card. Uh, and uh, with the with the with the same uh, allowance they have, uh, and uh, no matter which country they go to, they 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 won't be overcharged or they won't get any bill shocks and stuff like that. We just gonna they just gonna be able to use the same megabytes, same uh, minutes, messages, and everything, just like in the UK. Are you planning to expand uh, within the EU, for example? We do. We are, we have very good plans, and we have um, uh, we we try hard to become a full MVNO in Greece, uh, and we're gonna be the only independent MVNO in Greece uh, when we manage that. And that's gonna be uh, I'm assuming that's gonna be the next uh, in the beginning of next year. We are uh, we are uh, we are uh, in a deep communication with uh, all M M M M MNOs in in Greece. Uh, especially one MNO is also, uh, we are all about to sign the agreement with them and once we sign the agreement then the IT and technical part will, will, will start to operate and that, that is going to take some time and I'm assuming next year, in the beginning of next year, we should be able to release our um, full MNO project in Greece. What about countries outside UK and the uh, European Union, for example, Georgia or any other countries? Right, that's a good question. Since we are Georgians, we started to create this service uh, in Georgia. However, unfortunately, uh, Georgia is not uh, uh, familiar with all these uh, technologies and all this uh, setup of the business. Uh, there is not even one MVNO in, uh, in Georgia. Uh, therefore, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. Even though we try hard for, uh, it's been like three years or more, we, we, we started here uh, to create the same setup here in Georgia. 
Uh, however, unfortunately, uh, un up until now, we, we, still, uh, we are still unable to set it up uh, as, as the industry is not familiar to the, to the matters of uh, MVNO um, business. Uh, and uh, Georgia uh, encouraged us to create uh, the same setup in different countries, for example, in, in the UK, in Greece. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, very much encouraged to bring, encouraged to bring this experience in Georgia to, uh, to, to expand and expose all this uh, experience uh, I gathered and gained during this time uh, setting up the MNO in the UK. So I hope, <clears throat> and I really want to create MVNO in Georgia as well, and I do hope that Georgian MVNO will be uh, created uh, this year, uh, which is quite tricky. But everything is possible if we all try hard, obviously. So uh, we'll see. Well, good luck, Rati, Thanks. to you, to Mobinex. And uh, we really hope to see uh, Georgian British company operating in Georgia as well, because uh, this will give a lot of synergies to Georgian users traveling abroad as well. Great. Thanks for having me here. Thank you very much. More on business this week on to Natia Taktakishvili. Kastelun Mare, a hotel located in Tikhistiri, intends to host tourists from Georgia, Poland and the United Arab Emirates, as well as from neighboring countries during the current season. The head of Kastelun Mare, Zanda Meshidze, notes that hotel room price ranges from 300 lari to 900 lari per night during the season. Compared to 2022, the hotel expects tourist number to increase by at least 50 percent, according to hotel bookings made in advance in 2023. We are looking forward to the 2023 season with the restored forces after the pandemic. Statistically, Georgian tourists occupy the first place in our hotel with over 52 percent, followed by tourists from Poland with 25 percent. Visitors from Gulf countries occupy 10 percent. The rest is distributed to different countries, said Zenda Meshidze. The head of Castelo Mare notes that compared to the same period of 2022, a slight increase in prices has already observed in the hotel as food products have become more expensive. Accordingly, the spending part of the hotel has increased. Taukisi Panorama declares that 85% of the land plots are already sold. As the managing partner of the project, Mr. Gegi Wasadze, notes, high demand means that the project will be finished one year earlier. Early completion of the project is directly related to the customer's high demand. As you know, we started sales of Taukisi Panorama in May 2022, exactly one year ago. The completion of the project was planned late in 2024, Wasadze said. Taukisi Panorama, a project fully adapted to modern standards is located seven minutes away from the city center in a quiet and ecologically clean environment. The investment value of this project exceeds 30 million USD. It's located only 30 hectares and includes 98 individual land plots which are provided with all types of communication. The project has 15,000 square meter of recreation area including tennis, football, basketball courses, a skate park, and a bicycle lane, a one-kilometer walking LA children's entertainment spaces, as well as many other interesting and necessary infrastructure. The production of sparkling wine Chapidon located in the territory of Art Villa Garigula in the Shida Kartli is expanding. The company is finishing to work on creating a space where they will receive local and foreign tourists. We want it to be a space where guests will come on weekends, taste wine and relax, said the creator of the brand Jabba Mujiri. Until now, Chapidon has produced 5,000 bottles of wine and champagne, of which 2,000 bottles are sparkling wines. According to the company, the demand is very high and they plan to double the production for the next year. Currently, the winery does not have its own grapes, so they have to purchase them from local farmers. In the future, the company is planning to have its own winery. The company has invested 150,000 US in the production of sparkling wine. The price of Chapidon wines ranges from 25 lari to 40 lari. 
The founder of Turebi.g says that the travel prices to Turkey have increased compared to the last year, but despite this, demand is still high, especially in July-August. The founder of Turebi.g, Nika Kogoladze, says that five flights are operated in a weekend from Tbilisi to Turkey. As usual, tickets are fully sold. Ticket price ranges from 800 lari to 1,000 lari for July-August per person. As for the recommended hotels, prices start from 2,000 lari, which means that a holiday in Turkey will cost one person more than 3,000 lari. This is the cost of the tour package for a week holiday in Turkey. These prices are maintained in September as well, with a maximum of 10% decrease. For summer 2023, the prices are not reduced, the demand is increasing and the price is correspondingly high. Georgians are used to a healthy vacation and despite the high cost, they still choose to spend a holiday abroad, says Nika Gogoladze. Ekaterine Gegia, the founder of street food company Tamtaki, notes that their business is new in the Georgian market and it needs development, so the state should actively participate in it. According to her, it would be encouraging for small and medium-sized enterprises to organize more fairs in open spaces in Georgia, which will popularize the brand and attract more customers. It's quite a new and developing innovation, which also needs the state support, bringing international bloggers plays a big role in this, so they will introduce us to the whole world. Kegia explained, Tamtaki is a Georgian street food company that offers signature dishes. The company supplies both meat products and vegetarian food to the market. The price of Tamtaki dishes vary from 9 lari to 20 lari. Zurab Gojiashvili, the founder of Tiriponi Gardens, told BMDG that they planted the apple orchards to replace the imported product and supply the local market with Georgian apples. As for the export, Zurab Gojiashvili says that the company is in the standby mode at this stage and the exports depend on the demand of the local market. When we get the harvest, we will study the local market and it will show. Our goal is to satisfy and supply Georgian customers. We are trying to promote new varieties in the market with a collective approach, Gojiashvili said. Surab Gojiashvili founded Tiriponi Gardens in 2014 in the village of Kwarheti near Gori. The apple orchard was planted with the support of state programs and USAID assistance. Today, seven types of apples and two types of pears are grown in the 31 hectare gardens equipped with anti hail nets. Soso Manjavidze, the founder of the Agro Product, declares that they are actively represented at the international exhibitions worldwide, which helps them a lot in terms of exports. We have brought at least two business talks from each exhibition and started working actively with many companies, Soso Manjavidze told Business Morning. A few years ago, Agro Product started the production of drinking fruits under the brand Katilita Patiosani, which is now actively sold abroad as well as in the local market market. The products are exported in UK, Germany, the USA, where trail batches have already sent. Now the company has a special order from France. At this stage, more than 15,000 bottles are sold per month in the Georgian market, says Soso Manjavice. Currently, Ketile and Patiosani has a mix of eight types of fruits, which is made only from Georgian raw materials, and the company produces 50 million bottles per year. And before we say goodbye for today, Majoral Georgia is a part of this global family, is one of the biggest BPO companies in Georgia, which effectively provides outsourcing services for international partners, as well as for local organizations. Majoral Georgia serves customers from several industries, including automotive, e-commerce, travel and hospitality, information and digital technology. Georgis Isakadze sat down with Alex Mironenko, an experienced country manager with a demonstrated history of working in the outsourcing, offshoring industry, skilled in operations management, customer relationship management, CRM, workforce management, contact centers, and management strong in managing multi-sites and multi-operations in the BPO industry. Mironenko currently serves as the CEO of Majorel Georgia. What are the big plans of the company all in this interview? Okay, Alex, uh, uh, let us begin. I mean, uh, it's not been a while, I cannot say, about our meeting. And thank you very much for your, I mean, uh, coverage and, uh, I mean, uh, being so much reported to the local business community. Uh, 
But at the same time, I really want to have more precise update personally from you in regards of how business is doing in general. Uh, uh, market is getting more and more competitive here in Georgia, and you mentioned that already in your last interview with uh, BMG. But uh, how long Majoral is in Georgia already? Majoral Georgia? Well, it's, it's over seven years. So, oh, seven years we're in the market, yes. Uh -huh. So, and of course, we started from scratch. Yeah. And started from scratch, meaning not only just from employee number one to employee. <laughs> Whatever we have now, in thousands. For so, me to be. <laughs> so uh, the industry itself was, uh, was in, the, I would say, now infant stage. There were local players on the market, and uh, for us it was a, a pilot. Nobody expected Georgia to be successful as it is. Actually, just a day ago, I was talking to one of the EVPs, and I said, "What was your outlook? What would be the maximum?" They said the initial business case was 150 people. Then they updated along the way with 300 people. Uh, our peak numbers were before COVID, I mean, not COVID, before, it was during the COVID actually. It was close to, almost close to 3,000 people, 3,000 employees, right, so. It, all in Georgia? All in Georgia, all in Georgia. Uh, what is happening nowadays, while you mentioned uh, that uh, local market is becoming more and more competitive, maybe major Georgia was this markup and attractiveness by other big guys and major players yeah. from the worldwide market are here already. Well, we're there. I would consider us to be the anchor of the industry here. So we, we, we set the tone, uh, of course, and of, we don't work in silos. It's a, it's a global business. And then, of course, our competitors also closely monitor our activities because our client base overlaps, especially with the global clients, one of those famous brand names, either big e-commerce or, or some information technology clients or even travel clients. So we definitely share the piece of the pie. And of course, they monitor our success story. So, and uh, apparently there's several global players appeared on the market. One of them, of course, is, um, should I say the names and give them Why not, publicity? Please. Of course, the Concentrix is here. Uh, we, they have been here for a while. I think they have also grown. And the last, uh, let's say, years, Atelier uh, Performance, one of the biggest BPO, they're currently entered the market in the beginning of the year, so they also have some plans for the country, right? So, but the country is small, so I think that two, three global players is enough because otherwise we'll be stepping each other's, so to say, throat. So, um, and I like that I know they're doing business as clean as we, so there's not a really dirty fight on us, so, so that, that, that we, we welcome healthy competition because it creates it's, it's uh, where there's no competition, sometimes it creates a bit of stagnation or a feeling of comfort. So you need to be on your P's and Q's. So you need to be always aware of what's going on around you. And consequently, then, uh, of course, to be reactive, to be competitive. But we're so far ahead of any competition. So I don't take them lightly. But at the same time, we know that we have done already. We have rebuilt our path. We have already locked down a lot of markets, within the labor markets within the Georgia. So and for us, it's just we need to continue uh, our focus on sustainability. Oh, so what, what's the story about? I mean, I'm talking about the public sources, uh, about major. I, I'm talking about the group, which might be acquired by another big player. Uh, and uh, where do we stand in this regard? I mean, any update or whatever information I have that there is a sort of negotiation stage, let me say so, so far. So the information we have uh, is quite limited. Uh, all I can say is that I know uh, Teleperformance um, um, has put an offer, offer, yeah, offer on the table to the major shareholders and our major health shareholders. Obviously, it's uh, Saham Group and Bertelsmann. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the, I think, 20% of the stocks are, are liquid and they are being oh, tra publicly stocks. traded in the Netherlands. So we're a public company. So we list it on the Amsterdam Exchange. And uh, for now, it's a long process because it's a heavy. It's a heavy purchase, mm -hmm. so therefore a, a, a lot of uh, um, let's say groundwork needs to be done by lawyers, needs to go through the antitrust and everything else because both companies are listed, so you need to get a clearance from the financial authorities in the Netherlands and also financial authorities in France. So we expect that you know, the move itself upon successful, let's say, uh, um, path would be concluded Realistically, Q4. It can also stretch out yeah, all the way to Q1 true. next year. So, but we're looking as a positive thing. I can even expound you that. You know, that we 
our industry undergoing the transformation where eventually it's going to be only a number of big players left worldwide. Why is that happening, Alex? Uh, it's crystallization of the industry it's, or it's, what's going it's on? In order to survive, oh, you know, okay. so, so you, you need to join the big pack, otherwise you're going to be always one of those, let's say, uh, how, to, how to say that, you, you're going to be left behind, or it's that, that you know, you're going to not fight for the big piece of the pie, right? So the good analogy is like a, <clears throat> you know, big four, right? They're all present here. There's the YIP, PWC, Absolutely. KPMG. If we rewind 20 years ago, there were so many little companies doing those sort of consulting services and then audit, 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 audit companies. So, but right now, no matter if you country you enter, those companies are present there, right? So in a bigger scale, smaller scale. So we're also going through the same thing that you know, it's going to be consolidation, consolidation, consolidation. And of course, smaller players will not go, but smaller players don't have the resources to fight and undergo changes, especially in automation, in the light of this uh, AI, chat, GDP, so and so on. So they need to have resources to, to be competitive and to move into the next phase, and our business is also affected by this. What's the story about the success of Major in Georgia? I mean, uh, you uh, absolutely rightly mentioned as an anchor, as a locomotive, as a pioneer, at least for uh, BVOs worldwide here in this country, made this success story within the very small country and market, and you knew from the very beginning that this country was small and the market was limited. But Mid-Rural Georgia made it not just a positive, it's a success story. Yes. Success story for Georgia itself. You as an employer are, or, and, or remain always as in the top. So uh, brief us about the story by the end of seven years. Yeah, uh, so far you are in Georgia. So I can briefly take it for the, let's say, memory lane. <laughs> um, of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, the, the expectations were not so high because nobody knew what Georgia are, right? So, but quickly we realized, and surprisingly, there are a lot of uh, talented people who speak German language. And at that time, and there was always, there's a high demand for the German speakers. So one of the, our anchor clients came here with demand of German support, right? So we still have the same clients. So it's, it's still one of the biggest clients we have. So, so and, um, and due to the size, nobody expected there are so many talented people speak a variety of foreign languages, right? So in German is dominantly. Who associated the German language available in such a capacity in Georgia, for example? But nevertheless, we saw that there are German institutions that are very strong here. There's a Goethe Institute, there are German schools. German school. One of them is nearby in, in, in Vera, right? So, so that you know, there's also uh, a lot of uh, initiatives uh, from the public sphere, from the private sphere that's going on by exchange of students, so some of the work initiatives that people are not only learning language, they have the opportunity to travel, study, or have some seasonal jobs in Germany. And then they, they come not only speaking the language, understanding the culture, which also helps us in our line of business when they're doing the customer support for the German-speaking customers out of Germany. Or about the German portion of uh, German portion is one, one of the biggest. One of the biggest. Wow. Over a thousand people in, in major all speak German language. It's, and it's still highly demanded? It's highly demanded. However, the market is already very tight. Sure. I can tell you this because in the beginning it was, I can tell you, tell you the numbers. It, there was, in the golden times, in the golden era, there would be 40 applications a week. Now we don't give him 40 applications a month, right? So it's, it's much, it's much, much tighter. And of course, a lot of young people, especially when the, um, when the opportunities came to travel to European Union visa-free, a lot of young people tried to exercise this opportunity. A lot of them getting invited to study, finish their studies, and continue the studies. So, but however, we also suspect, I know maybe in some years, uh, it's going to be reverse migration when the standard of living will improve in Georgia. I experienced it in Estonia that you know, when Estonia was accepted to the European Union, um, and of course there was a freedom of travel, freedom of work, so uh, like free, everybody can go to any country and get immediately a job. So what happened, there was a, a flood. 20, 30 of talented percent of, let's say, workforce, talented workforce has traveled from Estonia. But then, after a certain period of time, we saw that the quality of life improved in Estonia. So a lot of people who were, let's say, living in Denmark or Norway or Ireland, they were coming back. So they got the skill, maybe they got some savings, and then they're coming back to Estonia to reinvest. So, so personal for you, taking into consideration your experience in other countries, this migration uh, 
process happening in Georgia last uh, year and a half, two years. Uh, this is not surprisingly, it's uh, like uh, a similar route yeah. which has happened in other countries you presented? It's, it's a little bit different. Oh, so it's natural. It's, it's, it's natural, first of all, because people are, especially the young people, it's a, they're all Western driven. So, I mean, over, no matter who I t talk to, I mean, I can, I can speculate it's not 100%, but yeah, sure. I would say 95, 98% of all the young people look their eyes towards the West. European Union, other Europeanizations, and so on and so on, so that you know, everybody is really breathing that, that air of. Let's and say, they are using momentum and opportunity, yes, like sure, yeah. Schengen and the UV, yeah? But for us, what we, we, in major, from day one, have not differentiated in the sense of what type of benefits we bring, what type of culture we bring, what type of, uh, I would say, that you no know, attitude. So if you go today to a country like Romania or to a country like maybe, um, I would say, Greece or Estonia or Lithuania, which those are countries we're present in, the atmosphere, the culture itself, you would feel that you know, whatever you experience in, in Major or Georgia, it will be co not copy paste, but of course it has a Georgian lo local flavor, but it sense that you know, we have not differentiated or treated anything differently. So we came with the same package. So that for us it was important that we set the tone from the very beginning, to set the standards from the very beginning, and that that's also differentiated us in a sense of growth. Because the local players were here, smaller players, but People saw that you know the attitude towards employee, the treatment, the equal opportunity, diversity, and so on. So that you know we really look at our employees as the in sense of partners. Right. We're trying to be, in, let's say, work so much on engagement to keep them, let's say, with, with uh, involved in the daily life apart from work. Right. As I mentioned to you before, that being stable employer, paying salaries on time is not enough. You need to create a different ecosystem inside the company and outside the company to really set yourself apart. So, and that's what we're trying to do, and the team is trying to do on a daily basis. So. Tell me, uh, what are uh, you mentioned about this German direction within your company, which was highly demanded? Uh, what are the most requested directions right today, uh, which are still on and like more or less stable? Let me say so. Um. Or it still goes beyond the uh, foreign languages and the basic skills. So the foreign language, it's mandatory. It's, it's be. mandatory. However, we have a couple large-sized businesses that heavily uh, rely on English only, and English is one of this. Un I mean, it's a, it, I think it's it's, it's a potential is in abundance, in Georgia, especially within young population, 30 or younger. I would say that. A lot of people speak English, especially in Belize area, yeah. right? but it also shows in Kutaisi or in Batumi, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So we also do uh, one of the most interesting business is a uh, so-called content moderation. So it's a back office building with business. So we, the people who work there, they are not taking calls, not doing emails, they're not answering any inquiries. They actually, um, of course, on behalf of certain social platform, they monitor the content. And if there's abusive content, in the sense of, you know, there's violence or anything, adult-wise, or anything that, you know, that really against the company policy or just uh, just so something that cannot appear because the content is being viewed by people of different ages. There can be kids, it can be people who is, let's say, traumatized by certain things. So obviously, this needs to be filtered. And it's not only people who are trying to remove the bad content from the queue. Of course, there's a technology behind it. So the, so the AI catches certain videos, certain, and, and then upon review of the humans, those 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 videos, so-called videos, are not being released to the to the to the main queue. So tell me, uh, you mentioned in our last interviews that you were so much surprised with Georgian regions. I mean, positively surprised yeah. as well. How they are doing and how your offices are doing in Kutaisi? Well, Kutaisi has been quite a success for us. I would say that. Um, uh, first of all, I think we are, I would not say first because I don't know the whole scope, but we're one of the first co international companies who made a really big presence in Kutaisi. It was interesting because we struggled to find a proper real estate, but with the help of our real estate agency, Agent. our partner, so, so he, he, he was really helpful. You know, so, so that we found a building which was 
So it was not A class building, but we made it into the A class building. Wow. So it, it's, it's, you're welcome to attend, oh, to, to, to see it. Oh. It's, it's, it's a quite interesting journey there. So we, I think it's over 2,000 square meters where we have there. So in it's, um, um, we built a beautiful office there, uh, which can house up to 300 plus people. So uh, currently, I think we have a little less than 300 employees in Kutaisi. So, um, with two businesses, it's also German. German, German is included. But yeah. interesting that one of the businesses, and um, unfortunately I cannot name, name, but one I can. It's a small business, but still it's it's one of those very uh, let's say focused business. It's a technical support for ASUS. Whoa. So uh, German customers when they require technical support, so it's not only it's a dual skill. So we not only re requires to be. German speaker, you need to have at least some technical background. Technical, uh, yeah, so the technical support over the phone. So there can be some warranty support, but then you know, it's less, done from Kutaisi. It's done from Kutaisi. So the German customer who struggle with their hardware, Asus hardware, they are calling Kutaisi to get the support. Yes. So imagine that. That's how connected the world is now. So, yeah. So tell me about your plans. I mean, uh, yeah, we are all waiting for some changes happening around, and these changes. Uh, are uh, not predictable, unfortunately. And uh, I mean, this unpredictability is still on us, I mean, for the business community. Taking into consideration all of these tough periods we have, at least for the last three years, Alex, including pandemic, then war happening in Ukraine. Uh, what are the plans of yours? Uh, doing further, being uh, more coverage in Georgia, and uh, what are the major KPIs, maybe personally for you and for your team? Well, if we compare the last year to this year, uh, we've been actually we've been blessed in the last several years to have a very aggressive growth year on year, right? So, however, if we compare year 2022 and year 2023, our KPIs, of course, we expect some growth, but it's right now in the very moderate numbers, yes. moderate. So, of course. The country itself doesn't grow overnight, so and uh, the talent pool, as we discussed before, is also limited. However, we see that you know the growth cannot necessarily happen in numbers, but also into uh, I would say to be a trusted outsourcing partner for more, uh, let's say, specialized support. Specialized support we can call it tier two, tier three, so more technical support like ASOS, right? So that's one thing. So. Of course, the war affected us because we're also one of the uh, some of the businesses we have we have some Russian speakers, right? So obviously, the companies that we support, the clients we support, they exited the Russian Federation upon the tragedy that happened. However, the support is still there because language and politics is a bit different thing. So there are still people in the world who speak Russian who need support for certain products that we are partners with. So there has been a stagnation in some sort, but. Um, we also look forward to this partnership with the with the company that shows interest or showed the interest to acquire. Oh, okay, uh, so, yeah. so their portfolio is much larger. So and uh, of course the, they're four times bigger than we are. So we're also looking at opportunities within with them. Mm -hmm. So so that um, we do have state of the art facilities in Batumi, for example, which is not even half full right now. So we still have capacity there. Uh, Kutaisi is still capacity there. Belize is pretty tight, I can tell you this, and also, but what helps us is work from home. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our clients, they went to the hybrid model, so which is sometimes 50-50, 60-40, so COVID has been a curse and a blessing. Yeah. Before that, a lot of clients never considered uh, working from home. It was only brick and mortar, it was only working in an office, so, but now we see that it's a new reality where you can attract more people, we can do this, so, but the growth itself, I think right now we need to sustain what we have. Um, that's that's a core task, yeah. That's one of the core tasks. Um, however, there are opportunities with certain languages that we can compete with. Uh, what's not driving us? I would say this: um, strong lie. It's not our friend. Okay. Because a lot of international company revenues come with a hard currency. It's euros. So, so imagine this: our payroll. You're exporting your So our payroll still... becomes not overnight, but in a very short period of time, 30% yeah. more expensive. 
because our salaries all in the local currencies, a lot of our expenses in the local currencies because our local vendors, we need to support the site, support the people, so it's all in local currencies. So, of course, our expenses has been undergoing the changes. It doesn't mean it, it killed us, but it also showed uh, it's, uh, that uh, the, the stronger the stronger the stronger the lottery, sometimes it's not we are less competitive because now other geographies who also have a let's say qualified labor pool which is not so expensive stepping out at all. Whatever whatever currency is more stable and it's stable today, so we can adjust this. But if it goes even further to be stronger, it, it's it's it's, uh, it's a problem. It's not going to kill us, obviously. But it's going to be problematic. It's it's so, yeah. Of course, it doesn't need to be four. Yeah. <laughs> but it should be stable. Our finance team has a lot of mechanism in place. We do hedging. We do other things. So that it's it's, it's of course. Well, we have a great professionals who try to foresee those things and try to, let's say, uh, use all the financial instruments in place, all the tools to, uh, let's say, to, to, to not, let's say, to balance out the, those negative effects, so the Alex, special effects. I, I, I was always, always wanted to ask you, your local team is uh, mostly locals, I mean Georgians, or how, uh, can we just evaluate as sort of yeah. statistics, yeah? I can tell you there's, you said Maybe five percent. Five percent are expats. Ninety percent was were locals before. Yeah. So I mean. we we in the management currently, apart from me. Yeah. I think it's it's. <laughs> I think it's, you're Georgian as well. Yes, already. <laughs> sort of. Apart from me, yes, I think so. So so, so <laughs> especially how I drive. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um. Yeah. So most of our professionals, as well in the middle levels, it meet. Management and uh, high. And 95 percent. Uh, I think it's it's 98 percent. Uh, our aging population, uh, entry level management, and also our, our let's say first level employees. There's a mix. So there, there's a mix. So there's also diversity. That you know, we also have people from different countries. Yeah. No, not but not different countries in the sense that neighboring countries. But we have native German speakers. We have uh, people from different continents and so on. So that you know, we're trying to, I could say that. Uh, Let's say diversity is one of the things that we really cherish and promote. Either the gender equality, or if it's uh, let's say race equality, or anything else. So for us, it's just uh, it's very important. So. I got your message that uh, for the nearest plan, sustainability, and having everything uh, in a sustained way, is uh, like core from the action plans. Let me say so. Yes. But at the same time. Uh, I cannot resume our conversation without asking uh, my core question. What do we need for further growth? And because major old Georgia's growth is in line with growth of country itself. So is there anything in this uh, quite unpredictable situation happening in region and worldwide, Alex, what can drive this business to a positive way in a more that will reflect all your activities here in Georgia? I would say one of the attracting points, and it still remains attracting points for Georgia, is the ease of doing business. I mean, let's not, it's not just a figure that, you know, that's been uh, assessed yearly you know, by, the, by the institutions. It still exists. Georgia is still in the top 10. Very little red tape. You can set up country in a couple hours. Country, sorry, company in a couple hours. Taxation system is it's it's fabulous. If people knew about this, so for us, it's it's very important that you know that this the separation between the state and the business exists. So sometimes no help is the best help. Because for us, is that, no, I, I I really cherish our relationship with Enterprise Georgia. Yes, but they. Uh, a bunch of professional, let's say, uh, guys and, and ladies, and also that, that uh, they come in and help us when we need to open the right doors. But never, no, nevertheless, that you know, I always said, said also to Misha, you know, the CEO of Enterprise Georgia, that you know, that um, um, they help us to speed up things. That you know, they help us to let's say knock on the right doors and they open. But we are the ones who walk through the doors, so they're not. That, so their influence is zero. They just connect the dots. Connected so to the right. Connects, yeah. Connect the dots. So. What can help further is, is, is um, of course, the talent pool. So, if there are mechanism within, uh, or there are 
I would not say the mechanism, but if there are, say, certain strategy, how to retain the talent, because we know there's a, some industry in our industry is affected, and now there's a flow of immigration, so, so, that, you know, so we need to retain the talent, so at least to give them the kickoff on the start job. I can assure you that nobody retires from the call center, right? So, yeah, sure. so I mean, unless you're already in a high, the high level position. So no, nobody becomes a, let's say, a, a call center operator and then continues. They will advance, the so, that, so that the average, let's say, that uh, tenure, it, it's about two, three years. Otherwise, you get promoted or you just change the job, right? So obviously, with the entry level job for a lot of people, so we want to remain as such that you know, at least those people who are, let's say, want to enter our industry, they at least get some opportunity with us, and then later on they can explore the market here locally or outside Georgia. So for us currently, as you mentioned, it's hard to predict, but I look at opportunities, for example, as I mentioned, in languages such as English, right? So there's high demand on that, right? So, and I can tell you that there are a lot of customers who, in the past, it was always driven by the costs, which still are in some cases, but not everybody wants their business to operate out of Philippines, which is, or India even, where their English capacities are in abundance and the cost is different, right? So some of the clients wants to, so-called, to be near shore, near shore, right? So, so they want their business so they can even travel freely and so on. One of our clients, like, we have a purely business which is, um, we support United Kingdom, UK, so it's close to 140, 150 people. We're currently just we just uh, launched this 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 LOB, and it's automotive. It's one of the biggest let's say gr automotive groups, mm -hmm. and then we support this this client on behalf. So that's so uh, it's, it's it's interesting business because it's not a purely let's say uh, technical support or just somebody calling. No. Where's my order? No. It's more of a customer advocacy because the issues that they deal with sometimes they can last for months. So that some cases open up for weeks. So that's more of a customer advocacy. So in relation to automotive business. So and then. It shows that you know, Georgia is trusted with, because UK is very picky, particular market, right? So, and then sending the US. So we get trusted with those customers doing the job out of Georgia. So that this is also, I see opportunities that I know we have a proven track record. And interesting that the clients are careful that even with German language, or this, this, on the first two, three years, we only had two clients. It was a client in the airline industry and e-commerce industry. But then over time, uh, our, 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 our partners saw within portfolio that look, this, this guys are doing okay. They survived. This, this is store. Stable. So all of a sudden, other global clients, let's say, uh, we've been able to sell Georgia for them. Same thing I see as opportunity within English. That you know, all of a sudden we have coupled businesses that you know support purely English, not just the worldwide English, mm -hmm. but let's say the guys who are natives. And it's a success story. So if we can prove that success story, we can further to acquire business. So it, it's, a, it's a trial and error, and we have proven track record. So for us, we see that there are opportunities to grow there. In, Nigeria. in German, let's see, it, it's, it's, it's hard. But what we do, if we don't have German speakers, it's interesting. We, we sort of create them. There's an, we, have a, we have a, a program called yeah. Major Academy. Uh, you mean learning? Yes, so we invite people to learn German who already have some basis, like A2 or B1. Like having the guaranteed... Uh, they have a guaranteed employee. Con. If they pass all the tests, they, they, can, they, they, can, they, they, they can work with us. And what might be an overage salary for them? It's actually public information, so it's like, you know, billboards, I think. It's, um, it starts with 2300. It's gross, of course, but there are benefits that come along the way. So there's a five-star insurance. Sure. Uh, so it's a, we, 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 we've been partners with the local big players yeah, in the market. Yeah, yeah. So I think you know even one of them. So, um, and every year we reassess this to make sure the, be the benefits don't get, let's say, not worse, but even better. So we're trying to always improve conditions. There are a lot of smaller things we do. So there's also some of the annual bonuses and also that, you know, for example, uh, end of the year when a lot of spending during the Christmas and the New Year is happening. So a little boost of cash there. So that's happening on a yearly basis. It's guaranteed, right? So and. Um, Many other things, um, so which which I would say that um, makes us attractive in a sense that sometimes the smaller the things have the biggest impact. I can give you one example. It's one of my favorite benefits because I also benefit from this. I just came from the office. during the hot summer days. Uh -huh. Weekly, on every floor, we have a fridge full of ice cream. So when you have a coffee or you just had your lunch, so you can go and grab an ice cream. So it's 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 not something that you know I would say. Uh, 
costs a huge amount of money, right? So it's just an ice cream. But for me, it's, it's just the small things sometimes matter. So when you get a 30 degrees outside, sometimes to cool down. So that, and those, those small things add up into really, into really big, big, as I said, ecosystem of, of benefits. So, so that we're trying to promote and install. So, yeah. Good luck. Keep us posted about everything that's going to happen in the nearest future. And good luck to Major Old Georgia as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank so, you for this interview. And that's all for today. We will meet on Sunday, 11 a.m. sharp. Before that, all the news and outlook you can find on our agency's webpage, bm.g. Take care and have a good week ahead. Checkpoints is presented by pharmaceutical company GM Pharma.